Hey there, Sharon from Welcome to day 2,454. I know, lots of days. Of what you have to do now. Documenting the journey. Originally, as I came online in 2018, I started really doing videos. Came online in 2017 following my divorce and divestiture of all of our joint assets. And was old enough to retire, but wasn't really done yet. Wanted to figure out. Always been curious about the internet. Never done much on it. Never really participated in much of anything a couple of things but not anything notable so I thought well I'm curious about this I want to do something totally different than I've ever done so why don't I check it out so I hopped on started checking it out and found what's I think right for me so every day I create a couple of pieces of content one is an annual challenge this is actually my seventh year in a row of doing an annual challenge I've done them all my life but I never did them online before and I originally started doing it to warm up my voice in the morning for the content I wanted to create and for what I was doing and what I was producing and how I was showing up online. And it served me really well, but it also taught me a very important lesson that in addition to uh, doing one thing every day to make my life better, I could have a positive impact on other people's lives as well. And so if I'm doing it anyway, why wouldn't I share it? So this year's annual challenge is the Let's Grow annual challenge. We're focusing on communication growth this month, and our topic today is energy and enthusiasm. How energetic and enthusiastic are you in your various forms and various ways of communicating? Because guess what? Enthusiasm and energy is contagious, and it encourages other people to be enthusiastic and excited and passionate about the things that are important to them as well. So we talked about that and we just are rating ourselves today on a scale of one to 10, how energetic or enthusiastic do you believe that you are overall? Uh, and again, it varies from day to day, situation to situation, topic to topic, etc. Sometimes we're really impassioned about something, other times not so much, it's just kind of meh, yeah, that's what's going on not much control I have and I'm trying to learn to not get super excited and passionate about things that I have no control over uh, in different areas and aspects of my life with my granddaughters I have no control over uh, a lot of things with respect to them so why do I get upset about it? well mainly because I don't want anything to happen to them on my watch I want to make sure that they're always safe and protected and that means I act fearful and scared and, and more alarmist about things that they could get hurt on than they they probably ever would and they find ways to get hurt that I couldn't even imagine. My granddaughter whacked herself in the head with her swing the other day when she was down with her mom um, burning some, some twigs and things from the yard. And I, I'm just like, comes in with a big old golf ball sized goose egg on her head. And I'm like, oh, and then I'm thinking secretly, well, I'm glad that didn't happen when I was watching her. Uh, because I don't want, you know, it's just like our kids. We don't ever want anything bad to happen to our kids. It breaks our heart when they have struggles and challenges. And sometimes we just have to remind ourselves, okay, dang, I've been through this, but I can't help. They have to do it themselves. And, and that's true with our clients and customers as well. Sometimes they have to have their own epiphanies in order to make progress and move forward. We can try to help them with stories and examples and sharing, but we can't do it for them, right? That's probably the most heartbreaking thing about coaching and consulting to me is that we can't do things for people. They have to, uh, and, and it's, it's for their own growth and development, right? Uh, we also are talking about repeat strategy for supersize your business. I've been doing a series on fundamental supersized business strategies, strategies that I found based on my own experience that can apply in any industry, any business, and uh, they can be tweaked and used to create more of what we want in our business, which is what the repeat strategy is all about. When we have success, instead of going on to something different, why don't we find a way to continue and cause repeating of that success and automating of it? So many businesses, so many people I work with don't do that. And and I was guilty of that when I was younger. I And to now, not so much, but sometimes, of creating something and then deciding, oh, I'm going to do something entirely different. Even though it was a success, I'm going to do something entirely different now because I want to learn something new. Uh, I catch myself going in, in cycles and rhythms of, I need to learn something new. I used to get this itch every August that I should be going back to school and back to college. I think that's part of why I went to college and got so many degrees for so long was because I always felt like I should be learning and growing. And I can learn and grow without going back to a formalized education institute and getting you know, letters after my name. So 
uh, we're talking about that today. Uh, repeat customers are part of that as well, but repeating what works, repeating what we're good at, doing more of what we love and what we're good at will always give us better results than just powering through something new or trying to always be uh, creating something new because we've got the proven and we've got the new. Why would we not continue to do the proven while we look into the new? I guess that's my whole point with the repeat strategy. Uh, all right. That's all I've got today. If I can help you in any way, ask. Have a fantastic day. And I will, of course, be with you tomorrow.